Okay, so now we're going to code this up, uh, and I'm going to code this up in Python. Good. And so here we're basically going to just recreate this example. We're going to have a bunch of data points with the true slope that we know. We're going to introduce an outlier, and we're going to see how L1 and L2 compare. Okay, so we're going to create a bunch of x points at random, and then I'm going to sort them so I can have them ordered from small to big. You don't really have to do that. I just like doing that. And then b is going to be 0.9 times x plus some random noise. And so that means that my, a, my true a value here is 0.9. That's the actual slope of my system. So I'm just going to run this, get this running. Okay, uh, and I'm going to add all of that white noise, so I add some white noise, but I'm going to introduce one massive outlier at the end here. This, uh, this last point is going to be a big outlier. Now, I should point out, if I didn't have this outlier, if I, if I didn't have that outlier, least squares would actually do a pretty good job if I just had white noise on top of my data. That would, least squares actually does a great job of estimating the slope if I just had white noise. It's only when I introduce that outlier that it's going to really break my least square solution uh, and require me to do something different. Okay? Good. So here uh, we have the least square solution is really easy to compute using this uh, least squares. And it's really simple, right? It's a one line built into NumPy's uh, linear algebra package. And so uh, here we're estimating the slope A, but on the noisy data that has this outlier. So I don't think it's going to do a very good job. And then I'm going to plot this for you. Uh, did I run this? Good, I think I did. So now I'm going to plot this for you. And what you see here is that uh, in blue, we have the actual data and the blue dashed. The blue dashed is the true, uh, the true model. This is with slope 0.9. And then we have this single bad outlier here that's really, really bad. So I'm using this to kind of as a cartoon to illustrate how bad things can be. But that single bad outlier will tilt my entire distribution down. Because remember, I'm trying to minimize the square error here. And the square error to this outlier is so massive that the whole distribution, it's willing to have this much error with every other data point to make it a little bit smaller error with that red outlier. And so a single outlier can ruin your least squares regression. I mean, absolutely ruin the least squares fit. It's a big problem. And so either you'd have to painstakingly go throughout your data and try to remove all of those outliers by hand, which could be really subjective and really time consuming, or we can introduce this one norm and try to fix it uh, kind of automatically. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So now we're going to minimize uh, with the one norm. So again, we define the one norm. We're using kind of this built-in minimization uh, uh, line or command. So I'm going to run this. I think it ran, and now I'm going to plot. Beautiful. Okay, so now when I minimize the one norm of the error instead of the two norm of the error, you see this white curve is our L1 fit, and it is almost perfectly on top of the true model. Okay, so this, and this is because we're not squaring our error. Okay, so we're not squaring our errors, and so it has, is strongly incentivized to stay kind of pinned to the true data points because if it moved away, uh, it wouldn't you know it wouldn't help it in this in this one norm error. Okay, so this is really cool. The one norm adds a tremendous amount of robustness to outliers. Okay, in the real world, real data is dirty. Your sensors are going to fail sometimes. People are going to write down the wrong values. You get fat finger data entries all the time. And when you deal with real world data, you are going to have outliers and corruption and missing values and all kinds of problems. The L1 norm gives you an incredible robustness. Uh, when you're doing data fitting, this is just this is a crude, really really simple model. You could call this artificial intelligence or machine learning if you want. This is a linear regression. Okay, a lot of machine learning is regression, linear regression, and you're going to get the wrong answer if you have outliers and you're using least squares fitting. So you have to back up and think to yourself if you're using if you have outliers, if you have corrupt data you might want to think about adding L1 uh, error penalties instead of L2 error penalties. Okay, so this is kind of the first we've seen about how the L1 can also be very robustifying, uh, and we're going to explore that more uh, in future videos. Okay, thanks, and see you next time.